Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at volume measurements. All right, so in the previous tutorial with our area measurements, we were just looking at a flat plane. And in this case, we've extended it up. We've extruded the plane into the Z dimension. And this is a great way to look at mathematics, whereas you're normally, for instance, if I was looking at it from straight down above, I would see the x-axis like this and the y-axis like this. You can see the red and the green like that representing those axes. All right, and so if you can think of it as regular mathematics, that's how you're normally seeing x and y. But then you could also see the z dimension like this. And this is how I typically think of it like this, is x out here, y here, and z here. These are positive values of x, y, and z. And then the negatives would go the other direction like that. All right, so we've extended this cube up, I mean, the plane into a cube. And suddenly, instead of an area measurement, it becomes a volume measurement. So let's go into edit mode. And I have those uh, numeric sets so you can see the edge length still. And there is my length of 2 meters. I'll use meters. It could be feet, whatever you want to use. 2 meters. So it would be 2 meters by 2 meters and then back in this direction, 2 meters. So 2 meters in x, 2 meters in y, and 2 meters in z. So to calculate a volume measurement, or basically the amount of the volume contained within the boundaries of this cube, so everything on the inside, essentially, and assuming these are super thin walls like that, then you'd basically, instead of just multiplying uh, 2 times 2 for width and length, you measure, you measure 2 for the width, 2 for the length, and 2 for the height. All right, so it becomes, over here, I'll put it over here's my cube, I hand drew my cube. So it becomes 2 meters for the width and 2 meters for the length, or the other way around, length, width, and then two meters for the height, like this. And so it becomes two meters times two meters times two meters. So you can almost do these separately. Two times two is four times two is eight. And also a meter. A meter times a meter becomes a square meter. So, you know, a, a meter, a dot, we use dots as for multiplication, times a meter is equal to a square meter, like this, which means an area measurement. And then if I multiplied an area measurement times another meter for the height, like that, it becomes a cubic meter, like this. And that's why when you multiply 2 times 2 times 2 is, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, and then m times m times m becomes cubic meter. So this volume within the boundaries of this cube becomes 8 cubic meters like that. So that's, but remember, just because I'm saying cubic meter like this doesn't, I'm not really referring to a cube, the shape of the cube. I'm referring to a volume measurement. And when I say area, I refer, I mean, when I say square meters, I'm referring to an area measurement down here on the plane like this. And you'll see that because in the next couple lessons, we'll use circles and cylinders and we'll calculate the areas and volumes of those. And they'll also be using square and cubic terms, right? And just because they're meet their areas and volumes like that. So it doesn't have anything to do with the shape of the object like this. All right. So there we have that in here. And then if you, I'll show you how important this is, why we were saying in the previous lesson on the area measurements, why this is so fundamentally important to life, because a lot of things in life are all about business optimization. I mean, when you go to the store and you buy something, let's just say, you, you decide to move out onto the plains with your family someday and you want to build a garden and you don't, and you don't have much money to start with and you go you know you buy your eight meters worth of rope and you plant your garden but you're not aware that planting it in the right form you know is going to give you you know if you decide oh we'll plant our garden like this versus planting it in the say of shape of a square you know using the same amount of rope you're going to get you know you're going to grow more corn and more strawberries out of your out of your garden plot and versus doing it this way and so at the end of the season well maybe your kids have grown up and they've eaten more food because you knew you were smarter to grow it in this space and here the kids here didn't have as much food because you didn't grow as much because you didn't have as much space because you didn't know enough math it's unbelievable all right but that's really the case well even in the same case now with this cube imagine this cube being an odd dimension as well so cubes and you know 
hold a lot of volume, right, in this sense. But it's the same thing if you build the dimensions of your cube. Let's say you want to make, you're building a bucket. You don't have a bucket. This is the old days. You can't, you can't go to the store and buy a plastic bucket. So maybe you're going to make your own bucket out of clay or wooden clay. I don't know, whatever. But based on the dimensions of the width, length, the, of the sides of the of the bucket that you're making, you're going to create certain buckets with more volume than others, and maybe using the same amount of material. And to, well, maybe to get material, you had to go to the hardware store and buy some wood. And so, if you don't build your buckets efficiently, you're not going to get as much water. And so, maybe you have to make ten trips down to the river with your bucket to get enough water to water your garden versus six trips down to the river to fill another bucket that has the same you know amount of material but holds more water in it all right so we'll see that more in the future but it's a really really important concept as well all right well that's it for now and then in the next couple lessons we'll work with uh, the area of a circle and that's why the very first lesson in the math lesson dealt with radians because we're going to use that pi term again to calculate that all right well that's it for now and I'll see you in the next lesson.